it's exactly 4 minutes to 9 p.m. Welcome to Talking GH. I'm your host tonight, Van. And joining me in my studio today is Seno. So now we've got something special for you entitled Dunamis. Mr. Selom, welcome to the studio. Yes, sir, President Van, thank you so much. Uh, if you date and then you know you know the drill challenge. Uh, right now the, the situation is, is, is tight, so a little security checks to check your temperature, you know, make sure that uh, everything is okay with you. You are not showing any signs and the check and you are good to go. Uh, you wear your sanitizer. <laughs> Chalami, I mean, I can't plus only go, so I don't wear sanitizer. I don't, I don't get any sanitizer too. So, Chalami, I just cover my nose there, Chalami. You know that. It is so, 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 so Chalami. Yeah, special program. Thank you all for tuning in. Keep sharing the link. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe, and be in tune with all of our programs. Today, once again, I'm going to mention we're here with Mr. Selom. With a program entitled Dynamis. Okay. Alright, so Selom, I'll get a question for you. Since 24th January, yeah? Today is 25th February 2020. I want to ask, how have you been surviving since the coronavirus, you know, came about? Like, how has it affected your job? How has it affected your feeding, your regular schedule for the day? I mean, like, how are you coping with it? Um, basically, I would say it's, it's been very tiring. Not that you are doing anything, but being at one place is, is, is as boring as you can, you can think of. <laughs> um, in terms of feeding, um, well, not all the shops are able to sell, so you can buy a few things and then um, online services are also um, booming now since you don't really have to go out. So um, basically that is it. Jobs have been shut down for now, so further meetings, we all know that. Except you have something online to do, um, so talking about jobs. So um, mine is not online, so for now I'm, I'm free. Charlie, if you have anything, Charlie, any business, Charlie, just, just tell me. Okay, so uh, right now in the background we have Oceans. Playing by Hillsong United. I mean, it's this song actually does speak to me. Uh, here's one thing I'm going to reveal actually. Most people do not know, but the very day that I had a call from France telling me that my mom had passed away, this is the song my roommate was playing. So whenever I hear this song, it speaks to me. And you already mentioned before that uh, this is your favorite song. May I, may I ask you why? Why does this song speak to you? Yeah, Charlie. Um, before I pick a song, I look at I look at a lot of things. I I look at the, the personality that is singing, and then I look at the content of the song. Um, so looking at the the person here, song which is a very Christian brand, and then the one who led the song, Tia Smith. Um, I followed her. Oh, I'm not necessarily followed her, but I went to like read about her, know more about her. I saw how she grew up in the church. And the things that were inspired there, like the word of God. So, aside that, uh, my personality, I also look at the content of the songs and uh, talking about uh, the Holy Spirit being our guide, being our, our lead. Because in life, you can, you can be led by so many things, but uh, to be led by the Holy Spirit is one of the best things. The scripture says that um, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So, it speaks volumes to me, like the way it speaks to you, it also speaks to me, and I believe it is speaking to so many other people listening to us. Now, one question. Summarize your favorite scripture from the Bible, and tell us why, you know, that happens to be your favorite scripture, and, you know, what you want people to get out of your favorite scripture. Hmm. This, is a, this is a tough question, Charlie. <laughs> uh, favorite scripture, uh, some of us have been preaching, Charlie. Uh, to talk about favorite scripture is going to be very difficult. But um, I would pick one, that is Genesis 17, verse 1. And uh, it oh, was my, it was my next, um, yeah, I'm going to quote it. It was my um, kindergarten school teacher that taught us this scripture. Like, at a very young age, Genesis 17, verse 1. It said that when Ibrahim was 
99 years old, um, the Lord spoke to him and said, walk before me and be blameless. And it's, it's, it's been coming to me like over the years that God said that just walk before me and be blameless. Walk in my statutes and be blameless. So what I learned from that is that once I walk in the commandments of God, once I walk according to the way God wants me to walk, I will be blameless. Like he said, Genesis 1, 17, 17, 17 verse 1. Oh, 17 verse 1, sorry. Yeah. Okay, I'll check that out myself, <laughs> and I'll see the message it might have for me as well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. I am Van, and tonight we are spending some time with Salom, with a program entitled Dynamis. Salom, over to you. All right, so if you are commenting, please um, write your name and possibly where you are listening to us from, whether you're listening from America, whether you're listening from um, China, whether you're listening from South Africa, Zambia, just let us know so that we can just give you a shout out. Before we start preaching, this is Dunamis. Apostle Tony, I can, I can see you doing a lot of things, um, sharing and all that. Charlie, God bless you. This is Dunamis. Um, Jessica, God bless you so much. Um, Minister Ike, I see you. God bless you. Ike, it's here. Prayer one, I see you. Matilda, Charlie, God bless you. Let's keep sharing. Charlie, there's an apostle all the way from Beijing. Apostle Calvin, Charlie, we salute the grace, we salute the oil. In the United States of China. <laughs> <laughs> China, United States of China, God bless you. <laughs> so just begin to pray the language of the Holy Ghost wherever you are. Just begin to speak. Pray, pray. Thank God for the word you are about to listen to. Thank God for the word He's coming to give to you. Thank God for the blessing He's about to release in your life. Pray, pray, pray. This was most of you have been waiting for, so it's time. Makado, shake it, take it, take it. Ade, shibrando, shake it, dele, brandi, shaka, da, bado, shake. Aba, zi, ande, li, ke, li, be, li, ande, se, de, li, be. I, ba, ra, do, zi, ande, ke, le, bre, de, de, se, de, le, be, de, be, de, se, de. Aba, ande, li, abado, kabali, ande. Speak in the language of the Holy Ghost wherever you find yourself. Mahado Shai. Ah, Zikala Brando, Shedele Bendi Kaban, Delele Bo Shede. Andi Kalabando, Shikala Babe, Lebrando, Sada Labayade. I Kabe, 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 Kabe. Rabado, Shatala Babandi Ando, Shedele Bebe, Shedele Bede. Your next prayer point, you want to ask God that, God, I need a word from you. Speak to me, even as I'm spending time in your presence. Give me a word for the season. Give me a word for my family. Give me a word for my business. Give me a word for my education. Give me a word for my future, for my destiny, for my ministry. Open your mouth, pray wherever you are, engage the realm of the spirit. Shata Brago, Shekete Geyete. Ah, Bakado Go, Shateli Kataya. Lekete Lebato, Shekete Kete Kete Kete. Ika Bako, Shekete Brehe, Dikado Shataya. I'm reading from the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 25. The Bible reads, And a certain lawyer, an expert in Mosaic law, stood up to test him, saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said unto him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? 
And he replied, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said unto him, You have answered correctly. Do this habitually and you will live. But he wishes to justify and vindicate himself as he says, And who is my neighbor? So today I want to ask you a question. Who is your neighbor? Verse 30, Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he encountered robbers who stripped him of his clothes and belongings, beat him and went their way, unconcerned, leaving him half dead. I read verse 30 again. Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he encountered robbers. So, so Jerusalem, the translation of Jerusalem, or the meaning of Jerusalem is a house of bread, number one. Number two, Jerusalem also means a house of Jer a house of fighting, a house of war, a house of battle. Verse 31. Now by coincidence, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite also came down to the place and saw him, and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan foreigner who was traveling came upon him, and when he saw him, he was deeply moved with compassion. Child of God or whoever is listening to me, in life everybody will fall. Whether you are an apostle, whether you are a bishop, whether you are a pastor, whether you are a prophet, whether you are a doctor, whether you are a president, in life everybody will fall. In life, everybody will fall. But then the question now is, what can you do or what do you know? What system can you put in place to make sure that when people come to attack you, attack your spiritual life, attack your finances, attack your business, attack your marriage, what do you know and what can you do to prevent such an attack? So in life, no matter who you are, you will fall. Life is a journey. No matter where you find yourself, people will fall in their relationships. People will fall in. You, you can have a business. You would fall by entering into a wrong business deal. Your finances can fall by engaging into something that you are not supposed to engage in. Your Christian life, you will fall. You will backslide in one day. You, you would fall. Everybody would fall. So then this is the question of Jesus, that who then is your neighbor? And that's what we want to look at today, who is your neighbor? So secondly, a Levite, the Bible says, that came to pass by, and then he also didn't do anything. He passed by this guy that was hurt, who was bruised, who was bleeding, and then he moved on. So in life, sometimes the people that we expect to help us might not be the people that might necessarily help us. Who is your neighbor? That's my question. Who is your neighbor? Verse 33, but a Samaritan who was traveling came upon him, and when he saw him, he was deeply moved with compassion, and went to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them, and he put him 
on his own, pack animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, he took out two denarii, two days' wages, and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I return. And so this man is on a journey, which a lot of times we, we do. Because if you if you understand uh, this, this, this scripture, what happens is that, especially on the road, according to biblical history, on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho, that road has been named the bloody road. And this is why. Because the place was not um, a populated area, uh, there were thieves and then there were wicked people, there were robbers on that road. And so it was... Uh, constant thing that anyone who passed there, it was very likely that you would be attacked by these robbers because um, travelers were using that road and then they were normally traveling with goods, they were traveling with money, they were traveling with very precious things and so you would be robbed, you would be beaten, you would be hurt, you would be stabbed. And so that road is called the bloody road. And so as this man was traveling on this bloody road, he was in danger and that is life. And so the history about this road is that it, it became so common that um, in the time that this scripture was given to us, when you are passing on that road, you would have to help people who were on this road. And then these people will ensure that they protect you throughout the whole journey. And then people made business from that. So that's why you have to be good to everybody. You would never know who is going to be that person that is going to help you. Because look at this man. It wasn't a priest that helped him. It wasn't a Levite who is um, a trainee priest, if I can put it in that in, in, in that in that way. And not even that one was the person to offer him help. It was a Samaritan. And if you know about the Samaritans and the Jews, the Samaritans are not people who are really on good terms with the Jews. And so this Samaritan was the one that decided to help him. Listen, child of God, be nice to whoever you meet on the way. Be nice to whoever you encounter. If you listen to what I've been saying now, it means that your neighbor is not the one that goes to church with you. Your neighbor is not the one that is in the same fellowship with you. Your neighbor is the one that offers you help in time of need. Your neighbor is the one that will offer his blessings, that will offer his resources, that will offer the things that he has just to make sure that you are okay. That is your neighbor. In life, do not take anyone for granted. So we are going to pray, and our prayer will be in two dimensions, and and this is basically it. I don't I don't want to keep you waiting because today is the first day, and we just want to pray and then trust God. You see, and this is our prayer that God, in time of trouble, raise a helper for me. When my business is in trouble, raise a helper. It might not be the person you are expecting. It might not be that uncle that you are expecting to send you money. It might not be. Um, that person you trust that will be there for you in times of difficulty. Maybe the person that God is going to use is someone you have even ignored at church, is someone you ignored at the market, is someone you ignored in the classroom. We are going to pray now that God, 
when we fall into trouble like this man, raise up a helper. I want you to begin to pray wherever you are. Because like I said, in life, everybody will fall. And you will need someone to lift you up when you fall. Everybody will have a time when they are down. And in that time, if you not get someone to come and help you, you will be in trouble. You are praying of God. Raise up a helper in time of my need. David said that in the day of trouble, answer me speedily. You want to pray that God, in the day of trouble, answer me speedily. And as I lift up this prayer, in the day of trouble, when I'm not even able to pray, raise for me a helper that will come in the time I need. Open your mouth, pray. Sadabrando say, Likado Sakadia de Skadabara Bado Sadayabada, Lekebera Bado Go Seketekede. If you are listening to me, you are expecting God to do something. This is dunamis. You are expecting God to come in. You are going through something difficult. It is not just a radio program. I'm here to be a blessing to as many as who will listen to me. You are expecting God that God, this issue, if it does not come through. But you are praying that God, send me a helper. Send me a helper. Send my family a helper. Send my sister a helper. Send my brother a helper. It doesn't matter. This is dunamis. All power belongs to God. It doesn't matter whether it is financial, whether it is emotional, whether it is psychological. Whatever the issue is, we want to trust God with our prayer today. That God, in time that I am in trouble, raise a helper. When I need somewhere to sleep, raise a helper. When I need a financial help, raise a helper. So as you pray, remember that there is God, and this is dunamis, which is power. There is a God that answers prayer. Whatever you are praying about now, trust God that he is going to raise a helper. That's why I gave us the scripture. Don't look at the person that you know always is the one who might come your way and bring you help. God is a God that can do the things that even men do not expect. He can raise that person you do not expect to be your helper. And that person is what you need at that time. Pray, God, in the day of my trouble, raise me a helper. In the day I am in need, raise me a helper. Your neighbor is not the only person, it's not the person who comes to your church. That is not your neighbor. If you look at this story, it wasn't a priest that was his neighbor. It wasn't a Levite that was his neighbor. It was a Samaritan who had no connection with the Jew. So you are praying that God, in the day of my trouble, raise me a helper. Raise a helper for my family. Raise a helper for that brother. Raise a helper for that sister. Yes, Lord. And so I pray for every listener that may God answer you speedily in the day of trouble. Let not those who are wishing your downfall be happy. Let their expectation be cut short. As you are listening to me, I pray over you and I pray for you and I pray with you 
that in the day of your trouble, let not the enemy have the final lap, but may God step in speedily, miraculously, powerfully, may God step in, that in the day of your trouble, may God raise a Samaritan, may God raise that helper, Listen, you will not be disappointed. That is why I decree and I declare over your life that in the day of trouble, may that helper come. This week, may that helper come. You have been waiting for God to answer. You have been waiting for a miracle. You have been waiting for that blessing. You have been waiting for that report. You have been waiting for that testimony. Today, as you are listening to me, I release angels. I release the hand of God into that situation. Let a helper be released in the name of Jesus. Whatever you are trusting God for, whatever you have been praying to God for, whatever you have been believing God for, as you are listening to the word of God and as I pray, may you receive an answer now in the name of Jesus. Mahado Shada, Kade Shete Likato Shete, Lado Si Ade Scalabra De Shakali Ato Shekedeke. Listen, we are praying because we trust in God and He does not fail. We are praying because we are men, but we believe in God and we believe that He answers His children. God bless you for joining us today. Same time next week. We continue.